Hi, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carson and this is my knitting podcast where I chat about all things knitting. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Um, settle in, grab a drink, and let's get talking about all these whips on my needles. <laughs> Welcome back to yet another podcast episode. I have some, well, quite a few things on my needles and one finished object, which has not even been shown at all. So that's fun. Um, and yeah, thank you if you're a returning viewer for being patient with me. I literally declared Wednesdays as my days and I was gonna upload every week, had all these ambitions, and this month has been the craziest month ever. And since I'm pretty dang pregnant, it's just felt even crazier and extremely exhausting but it's all been fun stuff um for instance we've been working on the nursery we're in full baby mode right now uh i think i have like seven weeks to go <laughs> give or take so we had a baby shower last weekend it was so much fun everyone was so sweet got to see lots of faces that i have not seen in a long time lots of family and friends and yes, they showered us with love <laughs> and with all the baby things. So we're gonna have to make a few trips to get it all settled in. But before we put anything in this room, before we wanted to decorate or anything, cause if you might've, I filmed in here once before, the walls were yellow and now they're green. So yes, my husband, Logan, uh, graciously painted the nursery. It's been on our list to do for a long time, but it's just been so hot here. We were kind of worried it wouldn't dry because this room gets really hot too, but the weather has cooled off. It is chilled. It is nice fall, especially in the mornings. So yes, he painted it <laughs> in a couple days. I was honestly pretty surprised. He refused to use painter's tape, which was hilarious. And I was like, uh, is it going to look terrible if you don't use painter's tape? He's like, no, I have very steady hand and like it takes forever to do the tape. So we're just going to do this. And it honestly looks really good. Like I'm very impressed with him. Apparently he used to do this stuff back in college, uh, renovating. So yes, I am extremely excited. And that's why I wanted to film here today because it's just new space. It looks so much different. We have a crib we're borrowing from my aunt, which is so nice of her. It's so pretty. We don't have a mattress yet though. Um, and a lot of our stuff is still back home that we got because that's where our shower was. And my mother is graciously washing stuff for me because my our washer was broken for a bit. So yeah, we're we're a mess, but we're trying to get it together. So anyways, thank you for being patient with me. Lots of new, fun, exciting things happening. And yes, welcome to this new room. I hope to be in here quite a bit. It's just fun to come and sit in here and like imagine, you know, our lives in the next few months are gonna change so much because another person will be living in here, which is crazy. So. Alrighty, that was a very long rambly intro. Hope you're doing well, but let's just get on into it. So today I am also wearing, well, I'm <laughs> just wearing in general, my ranunculus. So I knit this a while ago, maybe a couple months ago actually, and I've worn it around the house a few times. I haven't worn it out yet. I'm still just at my house today for the most part. Maybe I'll go out somewhere today and just wear it out. <laughs> it's first outing, but yes, this is my ranunculus. I really really like it. I knit it in a short sleeve version. I um, did do I did some I didn't do the sleeves like the pattern tells you to do the sleeves I did them a different way. I talked about it in a few episodes back Don't remember which one so if you're interested in all my modifications, which honestly I didn't have that many You can go back and watch that video. I don't know when it was but uh <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how helpful that is to not know which one it was, but I think I put it in the title somewhere. So, if you're interested in the ranunculus, go check that out. I really, really like it. Um, it's in this like, it's Barocco or Barocco, however you say the word. Uh, remix light. So it's a lot of different recycled fabrics, and I think it's even like, or not fabrics, fibers. Sorry. <sighs> This is gonna be a rambly one but it was a lot of different like fibers some recycled fibers some a little bit of wool a little bit of cotton a little bit of linen a little bit of silk even there's just a lot of stuff in there so yeah it's this very light and airy garment and i really like it the reason i haven't worn it a ton is because i don't really know what to put under it today i'm just wearing like a nude bralette so you might be able to see it even but um i do think i'll get a lot of wear of this 
if I can find a long sleeve shirt that fits me, because I could kind of not wear it as a vest, but I really like the look of loose t-shirts over fitted long sleeve shirts, if that makes any sense. I like that look with like a, with a, like a skirt maybe tucked in. I don't know. <laughs> just dreaming of outfit ideas over here, even though I, I just stay home most of the time. Yes, this is my ridiculous and I really like it. Alrighty. So let's move on to finished objects because I have one and it's nothing you've seen before unless you follow me on Instagram. Then you definitely saw it, maybe. <laughs> so I have made this. This is, look how cute. This is a baby bear bonnet. I'm pretty sure it's my knitting for Olive. Okay, I think we got it. <laughs> this is the baby bear bonnet by knitting for Olive. It is the cutest thing ever. Oh my gosh, I'll insert a picture too in case it's not focusing because I can't tell if my camera's working or not. But yes, I've had this in my library for such a long time. I think even before uh, I knew I was pregnant or was planning to start family in the future, I just saw this a long time ago. And I just thought it was so cute. I was like, I'll definitely need this one day. <laughs> and I got the pattern. And yes, it's been in my library for a very long time. I've been really wanting to make him one of these. I was kind of hesitant though, because if you've been following this pattern or on Ravelry, if you go to the projects, I really love the way it looks just like this, but I didn't see many photos of it on children's heads. I was like, that's weird. I wonder why. Um, and I even saw some people mention that it had like a helmety shape in the comments. And so I was like, dang, I wonder if it's not on kids' heads. I mean, they might just not want to show their kid, which is understandable. But I just wondered if they didn't like the look of it on the head. Cause I don't know, I almost put it on my dog, but I was afraid he was gonna um, like kill it <laughs> in some crazy way. But I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it anyways. I did see a couple of pictures and it was like very, very, very tight on the kid's head and it could have just been the size. I don't know. But then I saw a picture of like an oversized one on a little newborn's head because I feel like every, every picture I see of newborns or like coming home pictures, they're always wearing hats or bonnets or something. So that's honestly why I made this. <laughs> and I'll get into a bigger ramble about my whole philosophy right now about knitting baby stuff. It's just been a struggle, y'all. It's been a struggle. I've been wanting to knit him all the things all at once. And I got into my head last podcast. I kind of talked myself into making him something specifically coming home, like newborn outfit coming home. And then, so I actually ordered yarn, which I'll show you <laughs> for like a little coming home outfit, which yes, would be cute. But y'all, my Instagram is on a algorithm of baby stuff right now. And which is good because I don't, <laughs> you know, I would like that content because I'm like learning stuff as a new parent. And this reel popped up and it was talking about the kid's first TMI, first poop. And it showed a picture of what newborn poop looks like. And that was not solid. <laughs> no, I don't know what I was expecting, y'all. I don't know if I was expecting, like, the picture just haunted me. And I was like, oh, imagine that happening in, like, something I knit him. Like, a onesie I knit him. <laughs> like, like, to go home in. And I was like, oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't foresee that, like, coming out of, you know, like a garment, even superwash, it just truly haunted me. I, there's even a special name for it. Um, y'all probably, y'all might know. I, I barely know anything. I'm learning as I go. But yeah, there's even like a special name for the first business they do. And I'm sure it's like that for a while. I don't know what I was imagining. I'm a, I'm a dog mom only, uh, you know, or I have been. So I guess I was imagining like my dog's business. <laughs> That's not what it looks like. Uh, anyways, so yeah, that haunted me. And I was like, okay, maybe I don't want to knit him anything that goes around his, his booty, like a romper, which is what I got yarn for. 
especially a newborn. And also, like, it won't fit for that long. It would probably just be for, like, memories or a photo or something. And I was like, don't stress yourself out, Carson. Because I was really stressing about what I wanted to knit him, what I wanted his coming home outfit to be. And it wasn't a fun stress. I was just, like, unnecessarily stressing. So I just told myself, no. No, we're not going to deal with that. We're not going to deal with the disappointment of, like, pooping in or... You know, we we just don't want to deal with that. I'm going to be going through a lot anyways. And it doesn't really matter. Like, he matters more than what I'll be knitting him. You know, I'll be so involved in him, so entranced. Like, it won't matter. So, instead, I told myself I would knit him some hats. Because, like I said, I always see newborns wearing hats or bonnets and I have a couple more bonnets I might want to knit him. I do want to knit him another one of these in brown, maybe in a bigger size. Wow, I'm getting winded talking about that. <laughs> Y'all, it was so shocking. I was shocked. Just the picture haunted me. Anyways, so yeah, I decided to knit him some hats, knit him some booties, and some of y'all commented on the last one because I was in this like state of deciding and they were like oh that would be so cute if you knit him something to come home in like you know it'd be good memory <laughs> but then um Amber from a lovely yarn I think is her podcast I love I love her podcast I've been following her for such a long time now she's one of those that I just have to keep up with all the time because I just I really like her podcast she's so like eclectic and vintagey she's really fun she comments on my last video and she's like don't stress yourself out, you know, knit some knit some hats and you'll be good to go. And that was after I'd already saw the picture <laughs> that haunted me of, of the first business. That's what I'll call it. Baby's business number one. So yeah, I'd already decided at that point and just seeing that comment, I was like, okay, <laughs> this is the right decision. You're on the right path. So yes, that's why I made this because I was like, stop stressing. And I've been wanting to make it for a long time. And like I said, I was kind of hesitant to. I was also hesitant to make this because in the comments on Ravelry, I, 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 not binge, but I deeply, deeply investigate patterns before I knit them on Ravelry or even buy them. Most of the time I already had this one. <laughs> but just to like see if there are any hangups or if there are any common things people have trouble with. One that was talked about quite a lot was uh, instructions not being clear for the sh the shaping. So there's a lot of shaping in this, obviously, to make it look so cute. There's like ear shaping and there's back of the neck shaping. But like one particular spot people were having issues with, and I don't know if whenever I got the pattern they had updated that, but I had zero issues whatsoever. So I'm so glad I made this and just did it for myself because it was so straightforward, so easy. And I think I knit this, I knit this in maybe two evenings just like two evenings after work so fast and i knit the size the newborn size because i wanted this to be his newborn hat and yes so i just love it i'm sorry i'm i've been rambling about this for a long time but let me show you the yarn i used because this is also why i loved it i went to my local yarn store here in southeast texas <laughs> and i got brought that pretty much most of what they have is Barocco Barocco. That's why I knit with it so much, which I used it quite a bit too in Washington. But I really like this yarn. It's called, oh wow. One second. Uh, anyways, it's called <laughs> Barocco Barocco Renew. And it's 35% viscose, 30% wool, 30% nylon, and 5% cashmere. So it's all recycled, sustainable fibers. That's what the label says anyways. And it's this like really pretty oatmeal -y color. And yeah, I just thought this would go with everything, whether I put him in just like a onesie, you know, that that we have already, or I really love this one store. It's called Once Upon a Child. It's all kind of like Pluto's Closet and it's all secondhand children's stuff, which some stuff, I swear I see the tags on some stuff. People, I guess maybe they get too many newborn clothes or baby clothes they have kids clothes too. So I've been trying to grab him some newborn clothes there because I don't really know how big he's gonna be. Anyways, I've just been trying to get him some like 
not super expensive clothes because I know he's gonna split up and he's gonna poop as babies do. <laughs> so whatever we throw him in, coming home or while we're home, I just I think this will be adorable. And I knit it. So that's the thing. The pattern calls for knitting for olive, merino, or cotton merino, and a strand of knitting for olive mohair. And I think knitting for olive merino is so light, it's considered light fingering, not just fingering. And so together, on Ravelry, on Ravelry at least, whenever you hold them together, it says the pattern calls for fingering weight yarn. But I use DK. Um, just because I would rather it be oversized. And yeah, maybe we'll see. <laughs> if it's that oversized, that's fine. He'll grow into it and it'll just be like a cute, cozy little bonnet. So yes, that is that. I've talked for that, talked about that for far too long. Hmm. Okay, so next up. Let's see. So that is my only finished object. I do have a half finished object and I guess I'll show you that next. I have so many things in this tiny little basket. I don't know about y'all, I keep all my knits in baskets. Just like scattered throughout my house. It's almost like I decorate with yarn. <laughs> like I just got some yarn in the mail that I'll show you later. And I just kind of like put it on our table because I'm running out of places to put it. <laughs> and so it's like a decoration, you know? Okay, here we go. So these are, oops, yarn just rolled. <laughs> these are my Hawkins Socks Test Knit for Sarah from Denim and Rain Fiber, Fibers, Fiber Company. I'll put everything down here. Um, and I'll link everything in the description, which these aren't out yet, so there's no link to them. But uh, I think they are set to release sometime in early November. So I'll keep you all updated, but these are the coziest socks. So I knit this one, finished it last week, and then I started this one earlier this week. And yeah, I'm to the part where I should start doing the heel. I just haven't done it yet. Because <laughs> uh, you'll see, I've been working on something else this weekend that I'm excited about too, which I did work on these yesterday. So these are the coziest socks, y'all. Cozy socks. Yeah, I'm excited to get these done because I have pretty chilly feet, especially in the fall and the winter when, you know, it's cold outside and then the house gets colder and we have wood floors. So yeah, I just really like wearing socks inside all the time. And I mean, I talked about these a tiny bit. Well, yeah, a little bit in my last podcast, but we got a full sock, y'all, and they fit so good. This is blocked which they were a little bit big for my sock blocker because it's a worsted or DK weight pattern. Whatever you engage with at this point. I use worsted. I use Barocco Vintage worsted weight in all different colors that I had in my stash. So yeah, this is a great stash buster. And you can even, she does leave notes for how to do the stripes this way. But if you want to do them a different way, you could totally do whatever you want to, you know? So yeah, it's like a tube sock situation and yeah i just like them a whole lot they're pretty high of course you can knit this however long you wanted to but i like them this high i was uh wasn't too sure how i would like them because i don't have a sock that goes up that long but i really like these a whole lot of course i only have one so i've only oh there goes the sun <laughs> it'll come back <laughs> i've only been able oh it's really dark so yes i really like these um and I'm so excited to get my second one done so I can wear it. And I'm very excited for this pattern to come out so y'all can do them too because they go so fast. I think if I only knit on this, I could knit them in a weekend for sure. For sure. And that would be the perfect gift knit too. I mean, wow. I got worst weight yarn. There it is again. Okay. I think we're okay now. I got worst weight yarn to make my grandma some socks as well for Christmas and I had some free patterns picked out, but I might use this pattern instead because it just, it fits so nicely. And I really like the way the ribbing hugs your leg or hugs my leg. <laughs> Maybe you'll like it too. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really like these a whole lot. And yeah, I'm excited for the pattern to come out. I'm excited. 
I'm just excited. I was really excited to test these too, because it was just so fun. I feel I felt like a scientist weighing out all my yarns because I haven't done that in so long. I don't really keep up with how much yarn I use for a project unless I need to see if I like have enough yarn for it. And so I like weighed out all my yarns beforehand, all my husband's a uh, sourdough, well just bread, just scale in general. It's for his sourdough bread. That's what he bought it for. But I used that to weigh out all my yarn grams with and convert it. I converted it into yarns. I felt like a scientist. I don't know why. Or a mathematician maybe doing that for this test net just to see how much I used but it was a really fun experience and I'm still having fun because I have one more to go and honestly I can even finish it today if I wanted to we'll see we'll see but yeah those are my Hawkins socks released early November possibly like I said I will keep you updated okay I'll save my exciting one or the one that I'm I mean, I'm excited about all of these, but I'll save the one I'm really excited about today for last. So I will, oops, I will briefly show you this. You've seen this a few times before. It's going to be like my halibut sweater that I showed a million times in every single podcast until I finished it. So I'm going to talk about it this time. But this is my husband's Christmas sweater. <laughs> Noticed I did this <laughs> because last time... I was like, I'm not gonna say it's not gonna be his Christmas sweater because I don't want to manifest that energy. Okay, but <laughs> I have a story to tell y'all. Okay, so this is his sweater. This is the Fishbone Pullover by Martin Story. I put Progress Keeper in what I did. Oh, I guess I didn't get too far this week. I don't know. I don't know if I've actually been doing it every single week, but every few days I just put a new Progress Keeper in to see how far I get. And I think I have like 10 more centimeters to go until I start to um, shape for the sleeves and stuff. So yes, this is it. <laughs> if you want to hear more about it, I talk about it in every single episode. So I'm not going to go into major detail. It is knit in panels, which is a great experience for me. <laughs> I've done panel sweaters before or a panel. No, I've done two. And it was fine. Um, I am gonna definitely try to adapt the sleeves though to make them in the round because the way the pattern is written, they're paneled as well. And I just think that's unnecessary personally. So we'll see. I'm definitely gonna throw a lifeline in before I start the uh, sleeve shaping or the shoulder shaping, whatever the heck I'm doing next. I'm gonna throw a lifeline in just in case I ever have to go back and lengthen the body. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, it's um, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's not a nightmare. It's just boring, but it's a good TV net. I knit on it during the week a lot, especially at night. And you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. I really wanted to, to have a panel done by the end of October, but I think whenever this comes out, it'll October will be bye bye. It'll be gone. <laughs> it'll be gone, which makes me sad, but. Okay, so yes, I originally was like, this is gonna be done for Christmas before baby gets here and for Christmas. <sighs> and I think <laughs> we had a good weekend last weekend, but it was definitely overwhelming. Like I realized how little time we have left. And <laughs> on the way home, I was knitting on this in the car because we had a few hours drive to get back to our house. And I looked out the window. <laughs> And the city of Jasper put their Christmas lights out. It's not even, I mean, Halloween at this point in time, in my current time period, Halloween has not happened yet. And this was last weekend. And they had put their like city of Jasper, Texas Christmas lights out. And I was just, we don't live there, but it's a town we have to pass. And I looked at it and I started crying hysterically <laughs> and knitting on this fast and furiously. And poor Logan. You know, I think he knew I was overwhelmed, but he was like, what's wrong? And I was just like, I don't think I'm going to get this done in time. I don't go have anything done, done in time. And he was so nice and so sweet. He knows I was a bit overwhelmed. And he was like, well, you know, it doesn't have to be for me. You could turn it into like a baby thing, like a baby blanket or something. And that was so sweet of him to say. And he deserves this. And I was like, no, it's going to be for you. It just don't, don't expect, please don't expect it to be done in time. I mean, it might be, it might be, 
But I'm just telling myself, we're gonna have a lot going on this year around Christmas. We might have, I mean, he, our baby might be a week old, like so tiny. There's just gonna be a lot going on and I just don't need to put pressure on myself. I even told myself if I don't get the socks done for Christmas, it's okay. I can finish them later and give them to them then, you know? Like I can, I don't have to knit everyone everything. I can give myself time because I'll literally be having a baby right before Christmas. So yeah, and we're trying to get stuff ready for him too, you know? That's kind of my priority right now. And you know, Logan knows that, he's so sweet. I don't know. I was, it was very overwhelming to see Christmas lights, especially right now in October, in my current state of reality, <laughs> it's October. But yeah, that's my funny story about this guy. <laughs> of course I laughed about it afterwards. I don't know, you know, pregnancy, hormones. I just, it really triggered me seeing the Christmas lights and then knitting on this at the same time. It was a lot. Anyways. This is my fishbone pullover for my husband. <laughs> We're still working on it. Still working on it. Okay, so the next flip I'm really excited about. Let me go get it. Okay, so this is an acquisition and a cast on. I got the yarn yesterday, or one of the yarns. I've had one of the yarns for a tiny bit. But I really hope my camera focuses on this guy. So this is the beanie. Oh, yep, there we go, almost. So this is the Beanie by ZZ Textiles. It's a free pattern and the yarn I'm really excited about. So it's just one of those beanies that you knit, straight stockinette, it's a triple fold brim. Or I think after it's all done and over with, you'll have three layers for the brim. It is a DK weight pattern, I think. I think the pattern actually calls for Three different options you could do two strands of mohair with one strand fingering three strands of mohair or just a straight up dk weight yarn i am doing one strand of fingering and one strand of mohair so yes look how fluffy this guy is i mean this is one of those projects that i think i don't know if i would be as excited to knit on it if i wasn't so in love with the yarn let me show you the yarn okay so I talked about this one, I think in my other, my last podcast episode, but this is actually sock yarn. It is Cascade Heritage. I got this to make socks with. That's my original purpose for it. It's in the color Latte. In person, it looks a little bit more mauve or like purplish than I was expecting it to, but that's okay because <laughs> the universe had a plan for me. I got this from Savannah Rose Handmade. Please focus on this bad boy. Oh my goodness. Come on, camera. There we go. Oh my gosh, y'all. This is probably the most luxurious yarn I have ever owned in my entire life. <laughs> it's so fluffy. So let me see so I don't mess the name up, but this is from Savannah Rose Handmade. Y'all know I love Savannah Rose Handmade. She's from Washington. Actually, maybe she lives in Portland now, but I, I know her hometown, I think, if, if my brain's remembering correctly, is where I used to live. And funny enough, we never met in person, but we like to chat over Instagram because, you know, she's just so sweet. So yes, it's Savannah Rose Handmade. Okay, it's called Haunted Bones. She had a few, she had an update. She's so into Halloween. It makes me so happy. She, I'm pretty sure, released a Goosebumps, Goosebumps collection. Like she releases collections every now and then. Um, I don't know how big the collections are. I'm not, I can't remember if it's a pre-order or what, but she had a couple of skeins of Haunted Bones, which was like a super limited edition, I guess. <laughs> Just like in her update. And I had saved the photo of it. Cause I was like, that is so pretty. It's like, I don't know if you can tell. And I don't know how the camera is really uh, picking up on it, but it is like this pinky, muted, very muted, silvery, purpley, but also a little bit orange. I don't know. <laughs> it's just so pretty. It's so pretty. And I was so surprised that I gravitated toward this, especially at this moment in time, because in during this, 
season of fall. I'm so into oranges and rust spreads and neutrals, but this one just caught my eye and it is pretty neutral. I'm just gonna keep showing you because I love it so much. But yeah, I, I'm obsessed with this one. I'm obsessed. Um, so, okay, it's actually, let me, I don't even know if I read this off. So it's 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. So I've told y'all that I've, met, I've knit with mohair before, but it was a hobby, hobby, however you say that word, Diablo mohair, and it was not, I think it had a lot of acrylic in it. It was so itchy and it just kind of put me off. I was like, I don't even know if I like mohair, but this is luxurious. Like it is so soft and I don't, I'm not allergic, I don't think. I know some people are very sensitive to mohair, but like it's not itchy. It's just 100% soft and it's like a cloud. And oh. see, so yeah, I'm really excited for this project because of the yarn, I think. And of course I'm excited to have just like a classic hat because I don't have hats. Funny enough, I started out knitting hats, like a lot of hats, <laughs> and I gifted them all, given a lot of them were pretty bulky because I was a new knitter. And I've been just really craving knitting myself a hat, like a good hat, not, I don't know, not like a bulky hat with yarn I could get, it, uh, you know. I, don't, I didn't want like an acrylic hat, which acrylic, a lot of people like acrylic, but I just wanted to invest in like, a little fancier yarn for myself, you know? And I saw this one and I was like, wow, I need it. And that was, I don't even think in my mind, I knew I had this color to pair with it. I think I just saw it. I got it in yesterday, Savannah's skein. <laughs> and I caked it up immediately. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I have the perfect fit for this. I, it's the Cascade Heritage, like they match. I mean, they don't match, but they go together so well. I just, I can't, y'all. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but it just makes me so happy. And I know my last podcast, I was talking about how I was knitting everything. And you can even see, I knit the baby bear bonnet in cream. I knit my husband's sweater. It's like this oatmeal -y grayish cream. My Hawkins socks are mostly cream and I was just craving color. And this is, it's getting me, it's getting me, so yeah. I am enjoying the process too of the beanie. Um, this is one that you like knit in the round stockinette forever and then you knit together the cast on edge. It's free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away. Y'all can go knit this one up too. And then you like flip, you keep knitting forever and then decrease and then you flip the edge up. So there's three brims and I just really like how these types of beanies look. And yeah, I'm really excited. The pattern is very straightforward. It is free, like I said. Uh, there is only one size, but I think it would be really, I don't know how easy, I don't know, if you got the time, you could probably swatch and figure out how many stitches you would need to cast on for your like exact perfect size. I just went with the pattern. I'm a pretty tight knitter and I was, I am using only one strand of mohair and one strand of fingering instead of two strands of mohair and one strand of fingering, like the pattern recommends. But I think it'll be fine. I haven't taken gauge yet, but I'm like pretty certain it'll all be okay. It's a hat, it should, unless it's like super huge. It doesn't look super huge. It looks pretty dang standard. It's gonna be triple folded brim. So it'll be nice and warm and toasty. I am excited. Wow, it's not even like hat weather yet. And I knit on, I started knitting this yesterday and I think I have just a couple more inches to go until I'm ready to fold over the brim and knit that together. And yeah, I, I mean, look at how it's knitting up. I love it. It's like this silvery, like very muted, pink mauve, but also rusty in a way. Oh, I don't know if I'm, my description words are doing it justice, but yeah, I am, I'm liking it. And I think this will be a great car knit too, cause it will be in the car next weekend again. This is like our first weekend in a month, I think, that we've got to be home. And y'all, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, <laughs> but next weekend will be fun too. It'll be a good time. So yeah, maybe if I'm not done, I could get this done this week though, cause I'm just really loving it. Um, I'll, ooh, I guess I could, well, no, I'll get into acquisitions first. I was saying, I've been watching a certain show and knitting on this. And I'll talk about that later because I haven't had a show that I've really, really loved and like watched for quite
quite a long time. Me and Logan have one that we've been watching together, but not like my own where I can just sit down and watch it myself. So I'll talk about that later, but yeah, the beanie. I'm loving it. If y'all do not follow Savannah, y'all need to and just look for her updates. She knits really gorgeous stuff too. And yeah, just go follow her <laughs> and then order her yarn. Cause uh, it's just, I don't know. It's a treat. It's a treat. Okay. So that was an acquisition. Her yarn was an acquisition. I got it yesterday, like I said. And then this officially acquisitions, this is my other acquisition. So in my state of hysteria, over the past three weeks and like needing to knit my child a coming home outfit before I knew the realities of the first business. I got this yarn. I have some left over. I've used this in the um, Friday sweater baby as a stripe. So I have like one almost full skein of this. And so I got three more skeins because I love this color. It's twill, knit picks, fingering, serpent heather is the color. I love this color and I found this really pretty ribbed onesie that I wanted to knit him um, and then I, like I said I was haunted Instagram haunted me with a picture <laughs> and then I decided no I ain't gonna knit him nothing because it's like it, he'll only fit into it for a short amount of time I'm not gonna get into my reasoning but like a hat is good a hat is good and little socks are good too you know so that's that's my plan. And I'm gonna stop stressing out about it because there's no need. There's no need. So I have four skeins, almost four skeins of this. And I think I do wanna knit him a sweater with his name on it, maybe like a three month size. Like maybe just take the teddy sweater or teddy bear sweater from Petite Knit, whatever that's called, cause I've knitted that one. And that calls for DK, so I could, I think. <laughs> I think it calls for DK. So I could hold it double and I would have enough and then I could use it. Um, I have horchata heather, I think. Like a whole skein of that left over from the same project. So I can knit his name in that or duplicate stitch. So that's my plan right now. But you know what? It could be anything. I think I would even have enough to make like another little beanie or a bonnet or something to go with it. So that's that. And I'm just going to knit whatever makes me excited. Because like, this is an exciting time and I should not stress myself out unnecessarily, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna knit whatever brings me joy. And I think that project would bring me joy because I've done it already for a friend and it was just so fun, so cute. And yeah. Okay, so those were my acquisitions. Thanks for sticking around for that portion. I know I've been chatty, rambly. I have, however, been reading a bit just a little bit. <laughs> so I will move on to the next portion. I haven't had this. I did it once before. I think in the same room. I did like a reading portion because I just finished a book and I was so stoked about it. And then I hadn't done it in a while because I haven't read in a while. So uh, welcome to the reading portion. Stick around if you're into reading. So what I've been reading on recently. You might remember I got a library card. I was so stoked about it. I went to the library, checked out a book. It was Six of Crows and I read like a chapter. I just didn't have a whole lot of time to read. I still don't honestly, <laughs> but I just kept having to renew that book, renewing, renewing, renewing it. And then I was like, you know what? Someone else can enjoy this book. I don't have time. So I ended up turning it in and I think I will eventually maybe listen to that one on audiobook or something, but I just, I didn't have time for that book. <laughs> and something happens to me around this time of year like whenever it's officially fall and there's like elements of fall like it's actually chillier outside you know the leaves are starting the leaves haven't changed here yet it usually takes into november for the leaves to change around where i live but um yeah i've just been feeling fallish like our wood floors have been cold you know i've been wearing socks inside <laughs> It's just something happens and I just, I feel the need to read again, which is always really fun. So this time last year, I was reading uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Best time of my life. Little did I know the adventure of my reading mind would be on. Wow. So that was like the last 
major series I've read that it's like enthralled me. I did read Crescent City. That was the last one I finished and I liked it, <laughs> but I, I definitely like Akatar more for sure. And so I've had this book on my list for a while because it was recommended. I think because I like Akatar. I don't remember where I found this on. Maybe I just saw other people reading it that I know read the same stuff as me. And it's called From Blood and Ash and it's by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And so far I really like it. I've been in the habit of reading again at night. It just kind of like calms me and soothes me. Although sometimes things will happen in the book and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> then I'm up. But yeah, I really enjoy reading at night much more than like being on my phone. I think it helps me fall asleep better, which is great right now at this point in my pregnancy because sleeping is hard. But yeah, I have really been enjoying it. I am only on page, I say only, I started reading this a few days ago. 150. Oh yes, because I took this to the doctor's office. <laughs> I'm at that point where I have appointments like every other week and mine takes so slow just waiting. I wait for hours and so yeah, I took this with me and it was the perfect project. I've taken knitting before, but sometimes I feel weird about it. I shouldn't feel weird about it, but it's kind of hard sometimes depending on what project you have, especially whenever I'm like knitting and they finally call my name and then I have to like spend a minute putting everything back in my bag. <laughs> making sure I don't drop stitches, you know? So yeah, this was perfect. I brought that to the doctor's office with me. I think that's when I probably read the most. But yeah, it's really good. It's fantasy. Um, I don't know what else to say about it, but <laughs> if you like this book, let me know. Or if you have read it, or if you're... Just let me know what you're reading. I love to get y'all's reading recommendations. Y'all know I'm a fantasy gal. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm... I'm excited about this book. I haven't gotten to the point. Back whenever I was reading Agatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses, that entire series, the first book was really slow for me. And like knitting came first and then reading came second. But once I got into the second book, reading came first and knitting came second, like in my priorities list of hobbies. <laughs> and I was reading so much more than I was knitting. I haven't gotten to that point yet in this book, but I feel like it might happen. And that's always good to shake things up, you know? It's always good to shake your hobbies up. So yeah, I'm excited about this guy. That's what I'm reading. So let me know what y'all are reading. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a good time. I love fantasy in the fall. I love fantasy all the time, but something happens to me in the fall, y'all. I just gotta read. Okay, so now I decided to do a different portion. <laughs> the TV show portion. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I've been watching. So me and my husband have been watching Still Game. It's a Scottish sitcom. And I really, it takes some getting used to. It's definitely like raunchy and questionable at some points, especially the earlier episodes. But like, we've just really been into that show for a while. Um, I don't even know why we clicked on it. We did have to use subtitles at first because just the dialect is so hard, even to, for us to understand, given we're like country bumpkins and have thick accents ourselves sometimes. But they just talk so fast and they say different words than we do too for different things and it was funny because at first the first few seasons we had to do the subtitles and like really pay attention to what they were saying and it was a really funny it's a very funny sitcom it almost reminds me of seinfeld or like even a scottish male version of golden girls in a way <laughs> it's about these like two best friends who are older and I'm pretty sure both their wives have died and they just were, they're kind of like married to each other in their own way. They're really sweet moments of the show. There's really raunchy, dirty moments of the show. So if you're not into that sort of humor, it definitely takes some getting used to. It took us getting used to and we, we like, we usually like that type of stuff. But still game, if you're down for that, <laughs> if you're down for a little Scottish adventure, check it out. But it's hilarious because now we were watching, I think we we're on the very last season, we were watching the episode the other day and it took me a minute and I was like, I looked over at Logan and I was like, we don't have subtitles on, <laughs> like we can understand. And we've been saying like little Scottish phrases to each other. I found Scottish biscuits cause they always have biscuits in the show. And I've always been like, what is a biscuit? You know, like it's not like our Southern biscuits. They're like these little almost cookies, tea cookies. I don't know, but I found them at the grocery store. So we got some, we ate them while we were watching the show. It's just a fun time for us. But I was gonna say, 
So I do knit a tiny bit when watching that show, but I haven't had like my own show to watch in a while. I've really only been watching YouTube knitting stuff, which is so funny. <laughs> so maybe I'll talk a little bit about people I've been watching too, although I'm terrible with names. I'll go through and I'll see. Um, but recently, like within the past week, I think I was sick one day last week. I'm still kind of sick, so I'm sorry if I sound... Well, I'm, I'm not really sorry because I can't, can't control that, but I sound a little sniffly. Um, i sorry. <laughs> but I started watching Anne with an E like a few years ago. I watched one episode on the plane. My very first plane ride ever. I watched Anne with an E. And I liked it, but I only got through one episode because she honestly, the character Anne gave me so much anxiety. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, just the, I don't know. I'm an anxious person anyways, but maybe it was the plane too. Cause I, that was my very first plane ride. Just like something about the experience. I just, I had a whole lot of anxiety and like Anne, the character gave me anxiety. And I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, she had a, like a horrible, horrible experience. If you've, I'm pretty sure I've read Anne of Green Gables and I watched the old version or the old movie like back in middle school for class. It's like I kind of knew it was happening, but um, yeah, just the character Anne. She is so just, if, if you've watched Anne, you know, she, I don't know. I think I just felt so bad for her and like she wasn't fitting in the first episode. Anyways, I stopped it. I didn't watch it again. It just gave me a lot of anxiety. And so I recently, I think this past week I got sick and I just took off for the day and I decided to just like lay on the couch and watch something and I watched Anne with Me. Cause I was like, you know what? I've been actually, I've been seeing lots of knitting patterns based off of Anne with an E. And so I was like, yes, there's one designer in particular who just released like an Anne collection. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I will watch Anne with an E again. And I love it. I love it. I'm on season three now. I don't know if that's the last season or not, but I'm so obsessed. The characters, I got over that anxiety. I love Anne. I did love Anne before, but something about it. She was scattered maybe and i don't do good with scattered because i'm scattered myself <laughs> like i need something to calm me down not hype me back up i don't know but i i really like Anne with an e right now and just like all the characters um relationships to, with each other and maybe it's because like i'm about to become a mom myself but like seeing marilda i think that's how you say her name and matthew like become parents in their own way it's just like so sweet and i don't know so that's what i've been watching and it's also made me want to cast on a beret i don't know if you watch Anne, you might know what i'm talking about she is always wearing this knit beret with this little like tassel on the end it looks so good on her and i have always been interested in berets but i just didn't feel like i had a parisian look but she has more of a farmhousey style and like this the setting of that show is amazing it looks like Joanna Gaines <laughs> like decorated the house. Like I looked at it and I was shocked. I mean, I know it's an adaptation of things that happened in the past, but sometimes when I see things that are based back in time, I guess just, just cause I like, I can't imagine what it looks like. And then I see it and I'm like, that looks like a modern farmhouse, you know? It's like, so funny that that stuff's coming back in style, but a, a little cottagey farmhouse vibes they just get me and then they also have a ton of hand-knitted stuff like um gilbert's hand-knitted vests they're all color work i want to make one so bad i mean they take a lot of time and then they also all wear these garter stitch scarves and Anne actually talked about one of the episodes she made her her own scarf and it looked so good to me and it wasn't just guard stitch it had like a ton of colors and stuff in it and she was self-conscious because she made it herself and i was like oh my gosh so i don't know it's a good knit show it features a lot of knits. It's just part of their life. Cause I guess back then, you know, it really was, they had to knit. Same as like Outlander. I feel like there's one scene in Outlander where she's like knitting on stuff and she's mending stuff up. It's like a part of her daily routine. Cause that's what they had to do back then. You know, they didn't have fast fashion or <laughs> places. I don't know. It's just really interesting. And I'm loving the knitwear and that's what I'm watching. 
Anyways, let me know what you're watching too if you have any recommendations. Um, I have a feeling I'll be doing a bit more watching things in <laughs> by myself. Well, not by myself with my child while doing other stuff later. So I could use some show recommendations. Yeah, let me know what you're watching. So I think for my next episode, listen, I don't know if it'll be next week. I don't know if it'll be the next week. And we, we might be on like a two week rotation until I'm home for a while. But good news, <laughs> I will be home for a while waiting on this baby to come. We're going in, we're going back to our hometown two more times within the next two weeks. And then I'll be home like for good for quite a while. <laughs> and of course, I don't know how it'll look like after we have a little baby. It'll probably be a while. Um, but I do have quite a lot of time off of work because I work for a freaking awesome company. <laughs> I get four months off of maternity leave. I'm really excited for that time to like bond with my child and learn how to take care of a child. <laughs> And so yeah, who knows? I might have more knitting. I have, might have more knitting time on my hands than I think I will. We'll just have to see. We'll have to see. But yes. So my next video, I think I want to collect all my thoughts, throw my stress out the window, collect my thoughts about baby knits, and share some baby knits that I've really been loving, even if I'm not planning on knitting them. Kind of like my fall video, like a lot of that stuff. I don't think I made one of those things that I shared, which is hilarious because I truly had plans to make some of that stuff and it just didn't happen. But it's still fun to like look at patterns. I look at baby patterns all the time. Anyways, on Ravelry, there are a ton of really good ones. I'll probably share free ones and paid for patterns because I love supporting designers as well. And yeah, that I think will be a fun video. And then before he gets here, like right at the end, I want to gather up everything that I've knit him and share that in a video as well. Like tangible items that I've actually knitted him. So yeah, we're excited over here. We're in baby mode, full baby mode. Um, thank you for watching this very wordy, rambly video. If you made it this far, <laughs> you might have uh, left way long ago, but that's okay too. Um, so yeah, also, okay, I have to say this. I must really be scattered because <laughs> the last the last I looked, I don't really keep up with much, but there was a thousand people subscribed and I was kind of like, oh my gosh, like I grew up in a town of 800 people, Mac, like that's the top of the list, 800. And so I was in my mind, I was like, oh my goodness, like that's a lot of people, but I don't know where I've been, <laughs> but I just checked and there's over 3000, which is crazy. I know that's just a number, but like y'all are all people, you know, like that's 3,000 people in wow that's just like a lot in my brain that's like times three of my town and more my hometown so I'm very excited if you're here if you're sticking around if you're watching I'm so excited please let me know more about you in the comments I do love reading your comments I sometimes I have a very hard time keeping up and responding but I promise I read them all <laughs> and it's just crazy so I really think there's like something exciting has to come from that, right? Like I have to do something, a giveaway or something. Even though like I want to give you all something, all 3000, because it's like crazy to me that people watch me talk about things. It's so weird, but it's really fun too. Like I'm really enjoying this community that we've built. And like I said, I see a lot of the same people like comment. So it's just like so fun, such a fun community. Okay, I will have to wrap this up because my camera is telling me that my card is full and I've talked too much. Um, but anyways, yes, yeah, so maybe in the future we'll do like fun near future, like a little giveaway or something. Because I just really, really appreciate all of y'all. Stick around. Feels like like a really special community. Community, I can't talk. I'm... Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for sticking around and I guess I'll see you next time.